Another win for the monster from Japan, but not one of his most dominant performances. Despite losing to Inoue, the palace gave a valiant effort and made Inoue look human at times. While many thought he would be run over immediately, the exact opposite happened and he gave Inoue his toughest fight among his recent opponents. So not much action in the early rounds. It was pretty much just a feeling out process for both guys. Both guys using their jabs to gauge out the other opponent. But the first bit of action we saw was in round 3 when, it was to my surprise, Tapales was the one pushing forward on Inoue and landing some good body shots while he was in the corner. His Philly shell also got to shine, making Inoue miss more than usual. Tapales was finding some real success early on, stepping in to catch Inoue when he didn't expect it, and stepping out immediately so Inoue can't get a hit back. The constant head movement of the palace was also proving to be an issue for Inoue because he just couldn't find a moment to land his punches. And the palace was landing punches of his own as well. This is something I would have liked to see more from him, more straight punches. However, Inoue soon stepped on the gas pedal and you could see just how much of a major difference they have in speed and power. Everything Inoue throws is at such a faster pace than from the palace. While yes, the palace was finding the most success while putting the pressure on Inoue, this is also where he would leave himself the most exposed and Inoue would find a perfect counter on him with this left hook. The reason as to why Inoue's left hook was more effective in this case is because he didn't wind it up leaving no way for Tapales to anticipate it compared to Tapales left hook which Inoue saw coming. It's the punches you don't see that hurt you the most. Now that the palace is stunned, Inoue was quickly able to push him back to the ropes using his left hook as a means to create an opening on the palace guard and coming in with a straight for the first knockdown. Inoue continues his onslaught in the next round but the palace is able to weather the storm and just maybe it looked like the palace had a chance for the upset victory. However, Inoue started making adjustments, lunging in to catch the palace when he steps out, and really making the palace feel the power. Now this punch right here would be the downfall of the palace later on. Notice how Inoue will step to the outside of the palace's lead foot. This is so that the angle of his straight punch is directly in line with the palace's head. <gasps> The last bit of success from the palace was this jab because his lead hand was already out before he threw it. The travel distance of the jab was much quicker as compared to if you were to throw it normally. But Inoue quickly read this and the palace wasn't able to land it again. This is another thing the palace could have implemented more and fight more in the clinch position. But this great effort from the palace wouldn't be enough and Inoue would land a knockout blow stepping outside the lead foot of the palace to create the perfect angle for the knockout. The palace is able to block the first attempt, however, he wouldn't be quick enough to bring his hands up to block his temple with the second attempt and he goes down and doesn't get back up in time. A good performance again from Inoue but not as dominant as what everyone thought it would be and the palace, despite losing, still proved he's a game opponent and an elite boxer. So now, where does this leave Inoue? Does he stay in this weight class and go on to fight someone like Murod John? Or does he go up to featherweight and become the first ever boxer to become unified champion in three divisions? Because honestly, Inoue really does have what it takes to attain that. Looking at the potential featherweight champions he may face, I think he beats all of them, and also whoever he may fight for the vacant WBA title. Going up definitely seems like to be the better option for his legacy. Or does he do something absolutely crazy and have a super fight with Gervonta, which would do crazy numbers. However, this seems very unlikely because he is still too small for Gervonta and Gervonta is multiple weight classes up, so he's really gotta beef up for that. It would be crazy though if something like that happened. But what do you guys think? What would you want to see next for Inoue?